it's so easy to scroll through Instagram, Pinterest, even your favorite magazine and quickly feel like I can never measure up, whether it's home decor or organization or all these beautiful aesthetic motherhood photos. It can easily feel like we are less than and just like giving up. We'll just never be good enough. And I'm here today to hopefully encourage you in your homemaking journey. These are eight tips that I've learned through my almost 11 years now of homemaking that I believe are key in being a good homemaker. And the first one is to prioritize and plan. Elizabeth, Elliot said, do the next thing. Don't focus on all the tasks ahead of you. Just do the next thing. These are such wise words. <laughs> Often, especially in homemaking, it can just feel daunting with this giant list of things to do and we actually do less because we're spending so much energy on focusing on all the things we have yet to do. So what I have found super helpful is just to prioritize two or three things each day that make me feel successful as a homemaker that make me feel accomplished and at the end of the day I can sit back and feel like okay today I was successful in my homemaking. So that can look different for different people, different seasons of life even, whether that is to have the floor picked up or to have the dishes put away at the end of the day or whatever it is, create a schedule around these two to three things and then stick to it. And I would also say with this, do what you can where you are. So if the kids are taking a bath, maybe clean the toilet. Or if you're fueling up gas in your car, throw out all the trash in the car. Or if you're waiting on water to boil in the kitchen, wipe down the cabinets. If you're running into the bedroom to grab something, quickly straighten the pillows on the bed. Just little things like that that can really add up and at the end of the day, make it feel that much more successful. Number two is to delegate. I heard it said once that you're a mom, not a maid. For some reason, a lot of parents these days seem to think that your kids are entitled to free time all the time. So you as their mom should follow behind them, pick up their toys, put them away. And I think we're actually doing our kids a huge disservice with this mindset. If we want them to grow up to be adults with good work ethics and cheerful attitudes as they work, it's vital that we teach them while they're young and work can be so fun. I love working alongside my kids and I think it's very important for them to learn that if they make the mess, they also need to clean up the mess. It's a cause and effect. It's a you reap what you sow kind of thing. And it, it doesn't mean it's bad. It's awesome if they play. I love watching their imaginations flourish. But then a vital thing is also that they clean up after themselves. I have fond memories as a kid of pretending that I'm working at a hotel as I'm delivering all my loads of laundry to the different rooms or maybe working in an orphanage and cleaning up dishes of all these kids that I just fed in my imagination. Kids thrive off of feeling accomplished and feeling needed. So once you get in the rhythm, this is actually a lot easier than it sounds and just is a blessing to the whole family and also for the kids in their future. Number three is to dress for success. Yes, I probably sound like a broken record with this by now. I'm pretty passionate about it. I feel like it's so overlooked in our culture and just you see mom culture as, you know, yoga pants and a oversized t-shirt and a thrown up top knot and I'm just mm, passionate about seeing that change and seeing moms and homemakers dress again for their job. Research in fact shows that what you wear matters. Not only does it affect other people's perception of you, but it also affects your own mental and physical performance. I also have to think of how that comes across to our husbands and our kids if we dress so sloppy around the house, but then dress up for anybody else. Like, how does that make them feel if they're not worth dressing nice for or doesn't really show that I value my job? And by looking nice, I absolutely don't mean like, you know, a formal gown and heels or anything like that. A lot of it's actually even 
more the act of being intentional about this than specifically what you wear. Next is to build your home. Proverbs 14.1 says that a wise woman builds her house. So how does that look in homemaking? For myself, probably the first thing that comes to mind is the words that we speak. I mean, the Bible also says that the power of life and death is in our tongue. And if we spend a lot of time complaining, whether it's to our family or friends outside of the house, um, it's going to be really hard for us to have a life-giving, generous, joyful servant attitude throughout the house. And there's absolutely a time to share our struggles with close friends, but that's very different than to always have kind of a complaining, muttering attitude as we go about our work. You might have heard the saying, homemaking is a ministry, and what's actually really interesting to me is the word ministry is derived from the word minister, which actually means to attend to the needs of someone, and isn't that what homemaking is honestly all about? I feel like that perfectly encompasses the word homemaking. All the things that make up homemaking, whether it's sweeping the floor, washing dishes, wiping noses, kissing boo-boos, whatever it is, all that should be not an act of drudgery, but rather an act of worship. Number five is a very relative one, and it is to stop comparing <laughs> and instead figure out what brings you joy, what works well for your home, what systems do you thrive on, and this is specific to everyone. I know I have heard so many people who say that one load of laundry a day is everything. It just changed their lives and is the way to go. And I have tried that numerous times. To me, it feels like a constant burden. I'm always having to think of laundry. <laughs> and so I've decided it's fine. It's amazing if it works well for some people. It does not serve me well. And so I'm sticking with my twice a week I do laundry and that works really well for our family. So your home, your systems don't have to look like everybody else's and the fact of the matter is we're all learning, we're all growing, so don't mimic someone else um, just because you feel the pressure because it worked well for them because some things might work so well for you and would be complete fails in their home and vice versa. Your home will be the most beautiful when it looks not like a Pinterest article, but rather when it's an expression of you and your passions and your family's goals and dreams and interests. And I truly believe that. That is when it will be the most beautiful. Number six is to declutter and keep only what benefits you. And I'm honestly still on a journey with this one, but I've worked on this long enough to know that there is so much freedom in having less. Less toys means less to clean up. Less clothes means less laundry. Less dishes means less washing. And it just goes for every area. Living less, I hesitate to say minimally. We, I, I know I would not qualify as a minimalist yet. And some people do really well on that. Some people do not. But I think all of us can learn from going through our things and just really being intentional about new things that we bring in the home, getting rid of things that no longer serve us, and that whole decluttering thing in our home has been so life-giving and it lends itself so much better to a peaceful haven kind of home. Number seven is one that I wish I would have learned before even ever getting married, and that is to figure out two or three meals that you are comfortable with, that you you normally have the groceries for on hand, know that your family enjoys, and ideally takes 30 minutes or less to get on the table. Having this arsenal of ideas is a lifesaver on nights when you're in a pinch. Maybe plans changed last minute, maybe appointments took longer than expected, maybe you lost track of time when you were working outside in the garden, whatever it is, but to have these few meals that you can pull from and are always a win is such a lifesaver. We also love having some weekly traditions. So for us, Saturday night is burger night. Sunday breakfast is baked oatmeal. Sunday evening is snacks, which is usually, I say charcuterie board, but I say that very loosely. It's basically whatever snackish foods we have on hand. Often what you'll find on the board is hard boiled eggs, um, beef sticks, crackers, or pretzels, um, often some fruit or some veggies and dip, just things 
really easy that I can just throw on the board and it also is easy because it's a one dish thing then because it's all just on this one board. I have loved that but having a few set meals like this that are repeated every week you'd think they'd be boring but it's actually something that the kids and everybody really looks forward to each week. And finally number eight is don't sweat the small stuff. There are days with teething babies, sick kids, interrupted schedules where things just don't go as planned and that's okay. Being a good homemaker does not mean a five course dinner every night. Instead, the goal in homemaking should be to create a comfortable and safe haven for your family. A joyful attitude and a heart of service far outshines a perfectly manicured home or a perfectly curated dinner. I read a quote by Jani Ortland that I think is very fitting here. She says, I believe that a godly home is a foretaste of heaven. Our homes, imperfect as they are, must be a haven from the chaos outside. They should be a reflection of our eternal home where troubled souls find peace, weary hearts find rest, hungry bodies find refreshment, lonely pilgrims find communion, and wounded spirits find compassion. I think that is so beautiful. Homemaking is a beautiful gift and I hope that these eight tips inspired you today, helped you today in some way. This is not an all-encompassing list by any means. In fact, I would love to hear what tips you would add, so leave them in the comments below uh, and we can all learn from each other. But I hope you know that I am cheering you on. Thanks for being here and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye friends! Golden, golden thing.